In today's episode, we will chit chat about Pi Bao's life and how he became a wedding photographer, and learn some tips and tricks when taking photos with Pi Bao. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the action show produced by the Kung Art students in Stanford. Before we get started with the show, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more amazing content. My name is Victoria. I'll be the host for today's episode, which is episode 14. Also, be sure to follow our new social media platforms, which is the Ace Agency on Facebook and Instagram. Right now, we're at the Protomic Studio, waiting for our special guest to come in and have an interview with us. Let's go! Okay, so now we would like to have a chit chat with Peep out here about how he became this famous wedding photographer. We are very honored today to have you as our special guest. Thank you for giving us your time and this opportunity. And would you like to introduce yourself to us? Hi, my name is Powell, and I'm currently working as a wedding portrait photographer, specifically assigned for wedding portraits only. Before we get started with the show, I would like to ask you, how did you come up with the name of the studio, which is Protomic? Of course, many people have asked me about the origin of the studio title. Protromic comes from the word portrait, which is a style of work that I'm fond of. Also, the word anatomic comes from anatomy, which is about body composition. But the words portrait and anatomy separately sounded a bit odd. So I merged the two words because I felt like that was the right move. And that's how it became the Protromic Studio. Oh, I see. So it's like a play of words and letters. Yes, I really wanted to make it my own and give it a slightly unique take. Something you cannot readily find on a Google search engine. We also would like to know a little bit about yourself, about your history. So, um, when you were in university, what was your major? I got a degree in Bachelor's of Education, but of course, it was not exactly relevant to what I'm doing currently. Nonetheless, it was still an area that taught me about technology, taking photos, recording videos, or about computers in general, so it is rather similar to communication arts. But it's more about learning and support uh, schoolwork, but the course does incorporate photography as well. Um, how did you go from your major degree all the way to becoming a wedding photographer? How did it start? Where did your journey of becoming a photographer got inspired from? I've loved to take pictures for a long time now, since high school to be precise, and taking photos while going on holidays with my parents, because it made me feel truly tech savvy while grabbing the camera, which I enjoyed and it made me happy. Then, while I was at university, there was a photography course in the Faculty of Educational Technology. So, when I discovered this subject, I felt like it was a calling. I enjoyed it and was good at it. Teachers and friends began to admire me, and it truly made me feel fulfilled while doing the work, which was the most important thing for me. At that time, it was a film camera, so you had to learn to develop a photographic film by yourself, which was also difficult. Yes, of course it's difficult and unpredictable how the picture looks and turns out since there weren't any access to online resources at the time. And instead, we had to learn from our teachers and perform extra research by reading books. I was quite happy with what I was doing, but then I needed to find a way to earn an income and combine my passion to help earn money for my family. So I started to do freelance photography for funerals, graduations, and weddings. I became a freelance photographer until after graduation. I applied for the company called Organizer Company, which takes pictures of events. And after three years, I moved on and worked in magazines for six years. Also, we would like to know, how did you start off with a teacher? and then went to a wedding photographer. Um, where did this inspiration came from? And how did it start? So at first, my current work was not relevant to what I had studied, but during that time, I also had a part-time job as an amateur photographer, which allowed me to learn a lot of things by working with something that I truly enjoyed. 
And after I graduated, I went for an internship in a photography company. And when I finished the internship, I also got a job in the same photography company. I've been a full-time photographer for nine years. I got a job immediately after graduation. When did you know that you didn't want to be just a normal photographer or a magazine photographer? How did you actually know that you wanted to focus it on pre-wedding photography? I've been working as a fashion photographer for six years. I'd learned about fashion career and I was also working as a part-time wedding photographer at the same time. I later weighed my options between fashion and wedding photography and I soon realized fashion photography was simply not for me. I had dreamed that once I'd become a famous fashion photographer that that would make me very fulfilled and that I'd feel edgier. But when I took on wedding photography, it made me feel more in touch with people and connected me with my emotions as well. I mean, their feelings are real and, you know, like they're in love on the day they're getting married. I saw those things and it overwhelmed me with emotions. It was just raw and powerful. And this job directly required a photographer. As a portrait photographer, I have to work on building relationships break the ice, learn, and understand customers. And it makes other people happy too, so it's a win-win. Yes, different from fashion, which is not my strongest point, what I, what I mean is that there's stylists and art directors helping out all the time. It's like, it's like there's people helping me, but with this, it's my own capabilities, so it makes me feel that taking wedding portraits is more fun, and it makes me have fun, so... I decided to take wedding photos up until now, after six years in the magazine. Out of your whole career, which one is your favorite wedding concept that you've made and create and always recommended to your clients about? Well, to be honest, wedding portraits usually do not have a special concept. There are differences in each couple, like they do not have the same sensation. Their history and where they came from is different, or how they became a couple is different. Some couples are like friends, always out to have fun. Um, and some couples are shy. They don't really show affection, but they do have love for each other. There's a difficulty in every couple to be able to present them in different ways. How will this couple be like? Do they have to show a lot of affection? Or will it be partly fashion, bringing in clothes to add to the picture? So it makes me feel impressed with every couple that I shoot. There's not much to concept. It's the identity, the emotions, and the feeling. So you look at the styles of the couple and then come up with the concepts for them. Oh, I see. So every single concept that you made is very unique because it depends on the couple's dynamic and relationship. But actually, Portrait's style of work is the identity, the emotions, and the feelings. We have to communicate their identity, their emotions, and their feelings through their eyes. More than communicate through their natural gestures. People who love each other will put their arms around their partner's shoulder like this, will hold their waist, or kiss their forehead like this. It's easy and basic, leaning on each other. It's about viewing and understanding the natural ways and bringing it out of the couple, making it look more natural and not just forced. I want the models to be themselves, however. Sometimes when my models are in front of the camera, they feel anxious and shy. So how I do a good job of becoming a photographer doesn't always mean that you're good at changing their moods, but also you need to have a good eye for spotting their fears and what they're experiencing that makes them feel this way. And I try to encourage that person to be confident and remind them that today is a special day for them because they are getting their pre-wedding photos. For each photo shoot, how long was the duration of the time? Was it days or hours? Like, how long was it? I personally give them an entire day because we need to get to know them. We break the ice and analyze a lot of things such as the clothes, how they met, what is their vision about the shoot, and really just try to be friends with the couple before we start shooting. 
when I first started, actually, I was taking it too seriously. I mean, this was back in the fashion photography days because I had to compete with the time. Everything had to be perfect. Then I realized that this work is also working with people's emotions. I really thought about how the words and actions might affect their emotions. If it's too serious, then the models become, will become tensed up. So then I came up with a theory that to be an amazing photographer is to always be a great listener and student in order to learn about how to make others feel comfortable as much as possible. When I mastered that, I felt like it was a signature that people would remember about me. During this pandemic of COVID-19, how did you change your visions or attitudes when it comes to photographing people? Well, my vision hasn't changed that much, but this pandemic has made me have this time to revise about my previous work. I've been asking myself, have I done a good job? Is there anything I can work on to better my craft? When you keep working back to back, sometimes it isn't helpful for us to see how far I've come or revising to see if there's ways of improving. I feel like I have more time to set proper goals. In situations like these, I try to see how I can work and create projects around this crisis and in the future how I will be able to adapt to the changes in order to keep the work following no matter what situations that may happen. Because I think because of this situation, the wedding concepts will also change due to the restrictions and regulations. Okay, now we would like to take a small break here with Sipao and we're going to see him in the next segment of this interview. Welcome back to the second part of the show. I'm still beginning photography. So for this episode, Pipao, what techniques would you like to show us and help me upgrade the quality of my portfolio? Because right now it's just looking average. So here I will demonstrate on how to set the lighting in the studio with one light. Stand with the model like how to set the perfect lighting. My style is that to use the light where it leads to and see the lighting that reflects to the model's face, which is more suitable for our model. Face this way, please. Light stand move closer to me a bit more. Okay. Vic, turn your face to the side a little. A little more. Okay. Um, the light stand move near me a bit more Now you'll see that the light will reflect on the model's face and will make her face look more fine and beautiful Chin up, okay, and chin down. I Think the light here is good now, so I will start the photo shoot Let's try Let's see the photo together. The next step after taking the picture is to choose the picture of which one is okay. So like when taking a photo, I communicate with the model. There are a few shots that I do, the continuous shots, so we need to choose the pictures that have good expression and the elements of the picture that are perfect for me. Let's see together. Um, here's the example photo that is already retouched, changing a bit of the background, making the hair to look more into shape, changing the angle of the arm and the clothing a little, brighten up the skin tone to make the skin tone look more good.
And our show has come to a conclusion now. We would like to thank you, Bi Bao, again. And please let us know if there's any way for us to follow you and your new or future projects. Um, if you want to follow this kind of work, go look at IG Pao Photo or Facebook Pao Photo as well. Before we leave, I have a present for you um, as an expression for our gratitude of everybody from Kong Arts Stanford. Thank you so much. I would like to thank you, the Protonic Studio, for letting us host this interview here. It is very nice. And for the jewelry that I'm wearing, I would like to thank you, Danny Shop, on Instagram. Be sure to check them out. Bua Aromatic for how good the room is smelling now. Thank you for all our sponsors. And don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe to S Channel. See you next episode. Bye!